under her chicken. Yeah, you did. <laughs> under chicken. That's funny. Whoa. That was a good throw, bud. It won't eat me. Well, that was perfect, right in the open spot. Here you go, sweetie. Can you hold those for me? Sure. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> How's it going? So Benjamin and I are out in the greenhouse today on this beautiful day. 48 is the high, which means it is right around 65 degrees in the greenhouse. It feels wonderful. We are going to be starting some seeds today. Um, I have a calendar all made up that I showed you guys earlier on this season, which showed me the things that I needed to start uh, when, like what varieties and when to do it. And so over the course of this week and next week, I had a list of seeds, which included sweet peas, which I'm not gonna do today. I'll do that later this week. Um, Love in a puff vine, snapdragons, columbine, and dahlias. So here are the seeds. You can see I already have my tags made up. It's always nice to get that done before I get things really dirty out here. Um, so we've got a bunch of different types of snapdragons, which I love for the cut flower garden. I've got um, the Costa, Costa, Costa apricot, uh, Costa silver, Madame butterfly bronze, the Madame butterfly yellow, Potomac lavender, and the Madame butterfly bronze with white. And then we've got dahlias, which I'm going to try from seed. I've never done that before, but apparently it's easy. But it says on the back of the packet to start them 8 to 10 weeks before your last average frost date. And then we've got Barlow Mix Columbine there. And Love in a Puff Vine, which one of you guys brought to me at the Cleveland uh, Flower Show. I planted them last year, had amazing luck, and I have some seeds left over. What you doing, babe? Oh, do you see one up? What? Where? Oh, Benjamin, that's our first daffodil. Look at that right there. That's exciting. What kind is this? Ooh, charm offensive. Oh, the soil's a little bit frozen out here still, a little bit. Is that exciting? Do you see any others in any of the other pots? I think you should inspect all of the pots. See if you can find any more. You start looking and you let me know if you see any. So I thought we'd go over some of the basics of seed starting, which I usually include in any uh, video where I'm doing seed starting. I've already got some trays of things going inside. So I've got some ornamental cabbage. Did you find another one? I'll be out there in just a minute. So I've got the tray of ornamental cabbage. I've got a tray of pansies, which are doing poorly, poorly, poorly. A lot of you guys said that they need darkness to germinate. A few more have germinated. I've had the lights off, so we'll see what happens. Um, I've got a tray of artichokes up as well as delphiniums. And I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, Elysianthus, two trays. Everything's looking really good except for the pansies, which was kind of one of those things. I have another packet I might toss in there here soon. I don't know. Pansies are so inexpensive to buy, it almost doesn't seem worth it. Oh, that's the same one, sweetie. But it is very exciting. I will give you that. I don't have it. Oh, let's not, let's not pick it, baby. We gotta wait till it comes up and it produces a bloom. When there's a flower on it, you can pick it, okay? Oh, oh, but you know, I'll find 
some more. You're gonna find some more? Okay. You wait there. I'll wait there in the greenhouse, sure. So this is my setup. I decided to do this out here because it's one, a gorgeous day out here and most of my supplies were already out here. I have this uh, tray here, this planting tray that keeps my mess all in one spot. I've got a bowl where I mix up my seed starting mix, which I've got here and right there, Aaron ordered a bunch. Um, but we need to pre-moisten that seed starting mix and I do that in the bowl. And then I've got my trays here. These belong to the self-watering seed starter kits from Gardener Supply. I've got a bunch of them clean and ready to go. However, I might run in and see if I've got an 11 by 22 tray for some of the snapdragons that has uh, more planting cells because I typically plant a lot of snapdragons. And then I've got my plant labels here, which they were a little bit long. I forgot to get shorter ones, so I did cut them to size because I can't fit the dome over the top if they're too tall. And then this is the marker I use some of the time, if I can find it. It works really good, better than a permanent marker. Hey, do you wanna help me find a tray in the barn? I need to find a bigger tray for the snapdragons. Yeah, we're gonna plant snapdragons in the greenhouse today. The grass is looking good, huh? So the, these, baby, are... Oh, there's some soil. These are full of alliums. I do. I, yep, I see that soil. Mama made a mess, huh? I'm gonna go get a tray. I think I have a tray right back here. It looks messy, but it's actually kind of organized right now. Hmm. Okay, so there's a tray, but no planting cells. Which I have these right here. You trying to reach the string? Mm -hmm. I don't know that we want to reach the string right now, sweetie. We want to keep the door open. Okay, let's go back to the greenhouse quick. So some basics in terms of supplies that you need. You need containers for them to grow in, whether they be seed trays like I've got here, or you know little cell inserts like this. You can use yogurt containers, oh, no, egg cartons. I'm going to be using some biodegradable pots today for our dahlias. Um, basically anything that holds soil that has drainage will work. You'll want seed starting mix because these baby plants have, I, I oh, what happened? Dirt. You got dirt, how? I got dirt. Let me look, let me see. Oh, I don't see any dirt, baby. You can dirt my mouth. Oh, I don't know. So you do need a seed starting mix because our baby plants have baby roots that need a loftier, lighter blend of soil to work through. Um, they just tend to do really well. So this is the type I've been using for a lot of years. Um, also something to mix it in because we want to pre-moisten the soil. So I just use this old kitchen bowl. And Benjamin, do you want to help me mix it today? You want to mix the soil with some water? So I'm going to pour a little bit of the seed starter mix into the bowl and then some water and Benjamin's going to help us stir it all up. Whoa, look at that. And the consistency we're going for is moist, but not sopping wet. When we take a handful of it, we're gonna want it to hold together, but we don't want it to drip a bunch of water. Okay, Benjamin, ready? Here we go. Okay, remember to hold the bowl with one hand. With that hand, can you hold right there so it doesn't go anywhere, and then you use your other hand to stir, okay? Doing a great job, baby. I'm mixing. You are mixing. You're doing great. Like a whole chunk. It's a big old chunk, huh? We might need to add some more water in there, babe. I may not have put enough in there. Okay, so this is perfect. This is what you want to go for. You want it to hold together like that when you squeeze it but you don't, like I'm squeezing it really hard, you don't want any water to drip from it. That is just perfect. So we're gonna plant our dahlia seeds first. And what I do is I just read the back of the packet. There's so much good information. And it says that we need to plant them a quarter of an inch deep. And it actually says on the packet that it's recommend to, recommended to start them inside. Your hands are dirty. They are. You wanna high five me right now? Oh, now your hand's dirty. What are you gonna do with that? I high five again. You wanna high five again? So it says to start them recommended inside eight to 10 weeks before your average last frost and to sow in biodegradable pots uh, because their roots are sensitive to disturbance. So it usually the packets have all kinds of good information that way. Uh, and I happen to have, uh, I'll do it again. I happen to have these biodegradable pots. These are new from Proven Winners. Let me show you a packet right there. We have used these in a prior video, and this is my first year of trying them out. So I'm excited that 
I have another opportunity, like a really good opportunity to start the dahlias in here and then plant them out, pot and all out into the landscape and hopefully um, everything works like it should. Okay, so we are going to spread these out right here and fill them with soil. I don't know how many we're gonna need. Whoops, I don't know how many seeds are in that packet. So another thing you might, might want is a tray or some type of saucer to keep all of your pots in. These are the self-watering ones from Gardener Supply um, that have, this is the top that goes with them. Ooh, let me see, right here. So this is the typical setup that I use, but since we need to use biodegradable pots, we're just going to line these up instead of using the tray. However many will fit, Benjamin, that's how many we're gonna plant. I can't believe these will break down. They feel like plastic. So it looks like we can fit 15. That's a lot of dahlias. So now, Benjamin, we need to fill up all of these containers with soil. Are you showing your hand, your dirty hand? You gotta put it down right here. And there's Benjamin's hand. Looks a lot better than mine. You're a lot fresher than I am, bud. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Soil in the container. Can you do that? Take a handful and you push it down in the container like that. I'm good. Okay, you go for it. Wait. Yep, just grab a handful like that and put it in a container. Great job. What do you want to handle it? Yes. Dirty hands equals a happy heart. Don't you think? Samantha Grace is inside with uh, Aaron right now. Last I saw, he was working on editing a video and Samantha Grace was asleep. So we're all doing what we like right now, huh? Okay, those need a little bit more. Can you put more in there, please? I'm not sure I finished my thought on the tray. So I have this size tray for the seed starter kit and then this larger tray for when I start Snapdragons in these right here. Uh, but it's just a good idea, especially if you're starting stuff inside to have something underneath them to catch water uh, to protect the surface they're on. And you could use plates if you wanted to, like dollar store chargers, like the larger size plates work really good. Really well, really good, really well. I don't know. You need to learn that sort of thing from your daddy, not me. They're very cold right now. Are they cold? Okay, so we've got plenty of soil in there, Benjamin. Now what we need to do is line up all the pots on this surface. Let me see if I have something to wash your hands off with. Just put them right down in there. It's cold water, but you can rinse off your hands. Just shake them around in there. Shake them around, and then you can dry them off on my pants. Okay, other hand. Okay, now here's your towel right here. When in doubt, use your pants. <laughs> okay, now let's take all of these little pots, and we're gonna line them up on our tray. I want some more, I want some more, more water. More water, here in just a moment. We gotta finish this chore first. We gotta put all of these up on the tray. Now we are gonna put our tag. Do you wanna put it, pop it right down in that container right there? Mm -hmm. Just push it right down, right up against the side like that. Perfect job, babe. I want to do, do another one. Well, that's just the only one we need for this tray. We just need one. All right, Benjamin, do you wanna show off the containers you just filled up with soil? Mm -hmm. They look pretty good, don't they? So ta-da! <laughs> Good job. Okay, so once you have your seed starting mix pre-moistened, you want to, you know, put it in your containers and tamp it down all the way around. Like make sure that you have um, firmed it up, not really tight, but enough to where when you water the seeds in, the soil isn't going to settle too much. I know about water. Oh yeah? Nice. Yeah? Have you got more commentary to add? Yeah. What? Me. Oh. Me. Yeah? Wait, 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 wait. That is very, yes, very true. So you can see I've left a little bit of a well because these seeds need to be a quarter of an inch deep. And we put our tag right there so we know exactly what's in this tray. I think I've lost Benjamin's interest. Do you wanna come help plant seeds? You can come help me put them in the trays. Okay, okay. so here's a closer look at the dahlias we're starting. And let me show you what the seeds look like. Kind of look like zinnia seeds, don't they? So Benjamin, we need to put three seeds in each one of these containers. Let me show you how on this first one right here, okay? So we're gonna do one, two, three, just like that. Can you pick three seeds out? One. One. Two. Oh, there's three. See, one, two, three. I think you grabbed two with that second handful there. That looks perfect. Do you wanna do this one right here? One. 
three. Great job. Okay, so we have the dahlia seeds in their little pots here, and they are buried a quarter of an inch deep, so we just put the seeds in, three in each cell, and then covered them with more of the pre-moistened seed starting mix, and Benjamin just ran to go grab our spray bottle so we can water them in. Um, so at this point, we'll let them come up, and as soon as they get their first set of true leaves, which is uh, technically their second set of leaves, um, we will thin them out to one plant per pot. You can't find it? Well, let me help you, sweetie. Let's go. Do you see it hanging there? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what I didn't even think about? You probably need to, you gotta lift it up and out. Okay, can you carry that? Full. It is full, isn't it? It's kind of heavy. But it's got, but it's got water in it. It does. It's got lots of water in it. Soap? No soap. Just water. Just water. All right, let's go water these dahlias in. Right there. Great job. Would you like me to finish? I'll get the ones that maybe you would have a hard time reaching. So the goal when you're watering your seeds in is just to settle them into their place, just moisten that top layer of soil a little bit more. And this is where the pre-moistened soil is so helpful because we've already packed it into the pot, so we're not gonna deal with anything settling and creating air pockets. Um, it's also easier because we don't have to like really water these in um, because dry soil is kind of hard to get completely moist when you've got it in containers. Okay, so this tray of dahlias is done. So now we have Love in a Puff, Snapdragons, and Columbine to still plant, and I'll probably roll through those a little bit faster. Same basic principle, we wanna pre-moisten our soil starting mix, or our seed starting mix, and then fill up our trays, and then plant our seeds based on the instructions on the back of each one of those seed packets. If your packet does not have good instructions, just Google the variety you have. You can find all kinds of information. Like with the Snapdragons and Columbine, both of those types of seed need light in order to germinate, which means we barely wanna cover the seeds, if at all. So in that case, I typically use a very light layer of vermiculite, which helps in so many ways. It just barely covers the seed, allows enough light for them to germinate, but it also helps uh, prevent algae and it helps maintain moisture levels. And I don't think there's anything else specific about the types of seeds I'm starting today, so I'm just gonna get this done real quick. And then we're gonna move everything into the studio underneath grow lights. You enjoying the sunshine, buddy? <laughs> it's warm enough to even have your coat off. Isn't that nuts? Got them all planted, nine trays total. So here they all are. We'll do a little tour before we take them into the studio. It's a little brighter out here. So in these two 24 count cell trays, we've got the Madame Butterfly Bronze and Madame Butterfly Bronze with White Snapdragons. I grew fewer of these just because I've grown these twice before and they're very similar in color. So really that's 48 that are very similar to each other. And then in this tray here, we have the Barlow Mix Columbine. I didn't have quite enough seeds to fill the whole tray because I used some of them in our winter sowing uh, seed starting project. So I had four cells in the back. I put dahlias in that. There's the tray of dahlias in the biodegradable pots. We've got a 24 count cell of Love and a Puff. And then in our 72 count cell trays, so our large trays, we've got all the rest of the Snapdragons. So this is a whole tray of lavender, apricot, silver and yellow. I ran out of 
uh, little packs right there. I have no idea how I am missing just one. <laughs> So normally you don't have to have a light source over your seeds until they germinate unless you have seeds that require light to germinate, like the snapdragons and columbines. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move these in to the light systems, get them all set up, and they'll just all be under lights um, because I have them set to go off right now because of the other seeds going. So it's kind of just perfect. The lights will be on as soon as everything emerges and it'll be really fun to see these things start taking off. So the last thing I really need to think about getting planted this month, I've got a few random like um, things I'm gonna try. There's some verbena and uh, some specific types of poppies. I'm trying to remember what else, lupins that I may start, but the sweet peas are the next big thing. And I have a lot of varieties of sweet peas this year. I grew a bunch last year. I think I planted 90 some. Um, which for me was a huge amount. Uh, and then I gathered seeds from most of those and then I ordered a few more varieties. The Florette sent out a couple of new varieties for me to try. So it'll be a really fun year for sweet peas, but we'll do that project probably later on this week. So I'm gonna get these all moved into the studio. You notice that Benjamin is no longer with me out here because he went inside for lunch. Oh, one last thing, I am gonna be putting humidity domes over the top of all of these to help maintain moisture and, um, and warmth until everything germinates and at that point I take the uh, humidity dome off. So anyway, let's head into the studio. And that is it for today's project. I hope it was helpful to see all the steps of seed starting and it's just super exciting to have more seeds go in. And I'm so happy that I took the time to organize the seed starting schedule this winter because it is keeping me going. Like I don't really have to put a lot of thought into it. I just look at the calendar and I know exactly when I need to start things. It's just so worth it to start a schedule like that and then you can improve on that schedule every single year. Um, so I have a spreadsheet going um, that I've showed you guys before that says like the date I started them the year before and if I need to make any adjustments for future years um, and so on and so forth. It's just like an ever evolving system, hopefully getting better every year, but then every year we're adding in new things and trying out new things. And so it's just a constant learning process. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today and uh, watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.